Is it possible for modern humans to abandon city life and go back to the past? That's what Knut Hamsun believed. We have all thought about it at one point, but Hamsun dedicated his life to this idea, at least to some degree. In 1920, Knut Hamsun won the Nobel Prize in Literature for his monumental work, Growth of the Soil. In this book, Hamsun presents a radical idea to the reader. Go back to nature and live there. Nature will bring you more joy than capitalism. To some, this idea is downright offensive as it insists that most of us have the wrong aim in life, to succumb to greed and a never-ending race for more technological progress. Are we really all wrong? Or is it Hamsun who is stuck in a loop of backwards thinking? In some sense, he fits the stereotype of the person who is too traditional, who believes that any change is bad. Hamsun grew up in a small place in northern Norway, away from the city. Later in his life, he had moved to America and also lived in Copenhagen for some time. His experiences in the city, especially in America, convinced him that progress was bad. People in the city were always racing towards destruction. Their competitions were nonsensical and led to nothing good. It only led to bitterness and greed. Capitalism was destructive in its nature. The answer was to go back to the past, to move to the wilderness and let nature be your guide. Nature also has some destructive elements, but as a whole it's more balanced and a far greater alternative to the city, according to Hamsun. When he returned to Europe, he travelled to Eastern Europe to see how people lived more in harmony with nature, where capitalism hadn't developed as much as in the West. He liked what he saw and would develop an anti-English worldview. He would not support communism, but rather the Germanic world, where people had a long and strong tradition of living off the land. Sadly, this also meant that Hamsun would support Germany in both the First and Second World War. After World War II, he would be alienated from everyone he knew and thrown into prison for his support of the Nazis. Despite his derailing mentality towards the latter part of his life, there are still lessons to take from his literary works, which were written long before Europe's great ideological warfare. In The Growth of the Soil, we meet Isaac, who is out hiking in the wilderness, when he suddenly decides to build a house out in nature. Rather than being surrounded by human civilization and all of its noise and troubles, he is instead surrounded by trees, pasture, rivers and the mountainside. He enjoys the peace and quiet and soon finds a woman to share his new adventure with. Isaac starts with nothing and takes only what he can gather from nature. His farm requires a lot of hard work and rewards him only with food, but that is all Isaac needs to be happy, as long as he can be close to nature. The experiment of living a simple life attracts many more people, but all of them become bored of it and are immediately tempted into making money instead. Businessmen had become interested in the mountains surrounding Isaac's farm, as they contained many minerals which could be worth a lot of money if sold to South America. Businessmen in expensive suits and lofty language make a camp nearby and gather workers who start digging in the caves. They also build a raft for the material to be transported down to the boats on the sea. Sadly for the workers and the businessmen, there wasn't as much minerals in the cave as they thought, so the whole arrangement had to be shut down after a short time. Workers lost their jobs, businessmen lost their prestige, but they continued to hassle with those who owned the other mountains in the area. There is a bidding war and nasty words are thrown around. The former sheriff who owns the surrounding mountains refuses to sell it because he knows that these short-sighted businessmen will just make a profit, then abandon it without thinking of the harm they do against nature. He earns many enemies by holding on to his beliefs. Now there's a common saying around town that he should be shot. They can't believe that he doesn't want to make them money. Meanwhile, Isaac continues his life, which is a lot less eventful than that of his new neighbours. There is a stark contrast between these two radically different ways of living, which Hamsun tries to illuminate to the reader. Isaac is ranting about all the newcomers who have come to make so much noise. He doesn't recognize the place anymore, with all the shacks, vehicles and gaping mines. The problem is that they're not on accord with life. They want to go faster than it. They blow themselves like wedges into life. Then life politely, but determined, crush them. Then they start complaining about life, they start raging against it. 
They shouldn't be so strict and fair and hard against life. They should be merciful against it and defend it. Remember what kind of players life has to deal with. Isaac's view is that nature has inherent value. It is not a resource that should be extracted and then abandoned. Isaac's way of life is the more sustainable one. He doesn't destroy anything. On the contrary, he makes things grow. Many people in the book abandon the simple way of life in favor of short-sighted profits. Isaac is the only one who goes the other way. Why would he buy things he doesn't need and go out of his way for shortcuts to wealth when he liked the simple life even more? Hard work and fresh air were his antidote to the exaggerated lifestyles of the capitalists. The book ends with Isaac's son, Elysius, who moves away to America. Barely anyone besides Isaac is left in the wilderness with his farm. They were all tempted by profit and modernity. Does that mean that Hamsun thought of the experiment as unrealistic or not of our time? Critics have often pointed out that Hamsun is too anti-progress and anti-modernity. Wouldn't it be better if Hamsun had accepted the new reality instead? On the other hand, our destructive effects on nature have always been a theme in modernity. We are destroying it little by little. Maybe Hamsun rather presents an alternative modernity where people have realized that we can't continue as before. Hamsun's insistence that the Anglican West was wrong led him to support Germany during both wars. He favored nature and a back-to-the-past mentality versus the ever-growing capitalist West. He suddenly found himself on the wrong side of the two great wars and was shamed, imprisoned, and humiliated in his final years. Still, Hamsun is regarded as one of the greats in literature and his novel The Growth of the Soil has been an inspiration for many who are interested in sustainable and green living, a topic which has become even more important in the 21st century than in Hamsun's own lifetime.